Hi, we're here at Who and Horse Farms. I'm with Cox Wensink. Uh, they've graciously invited us here to take a tour of their farm and let us know how things happen and work here at Hohenhorst. So Cox, why don't you introduce yourself and how you ended up here? Like I said, my name is Cox Wensink. Um, my family moved to Canada from the Netherlands in 1994 and started dairy farming in Canada. So that is now 27 years. Uh, I am fourth generation on this farm and uh, now owning and managing the farm. Excellent. How many cows are you milking? We are milking currently 460 cows in two locations. So we consider this our home farm and then we have another location that we call the Braemar Farm. At this farm we have eight Lely A4 robots and at the Braemar Farm we have two Lely A4 robots. So it's been a while. What did you start out with here? Not all of this of course. Yes, so uh, my parents started out with 65 cows here in yeah. 1995 is when they started yeah. milking in a parlor and where we are standing right now used to be our old parlor. Um, you can see some remnants of it left but over the years we have kept improving and modifying the farm and growing. Uh, so now this is our maternity pen as you can see and um, yeah, we've got three pens where we have keep cows uh, until about two to three weeks due to calf. Nice. So why don't we walk through the farm? We'll start now that we're in the uh, dry cow barn. Why don't we go through the whole system, how your farm operates? And we'll start off here uh, with the dry cow pen. So can you describe what the process is when the cow calves and where the calf goes and that type of thing? Yes. So when a cow calves, uh, she calves in the straw pack. Yeah. Uh, we take the calf and bulls go into the bull pens and heifers go into the mobile uh, heifer pens. The cow gets moved uh, after calving to the robot barn where we yeah. milk her out during her first <laughs> visit in the robots. Yeah. And we take out the colostrum. Yes. And the colostrum, um, we actually measure it for its quality. Here. And then we have a system where the colostrum gets put in bags, pasteurized and frozen. And when a heifer calf or bull calf is born, they get the colostrum from the freezer thawed out and fed to them within four hours of birth. Nice. So the calf leaves here and goes over there. Let's go take a look at yes. the uh, pen. So this would be where we have our bull calves. So after they get started, they're here for the heifers are here for how long? Um, bulls are here for about a week and a half before they get sold and, and heifers um, are here for only a few hours after birth and then they get moved to our calf barn right away. Okay, we're going to go take a look at the calf barn and follow the uh, growth process of a uh, heifer to calving. So we're here in the calf barn. Calves just got moved in. Cox, maybe you can describe how this all works. Yes, so um, in this calf barn we also have an all-in all-out system we have five pens of maximum 15 calves each and they are grouped by age so there's a maximum two-week age limit um, calves first when they're born go into the individual mobile hutches for roughly one week until they are strong drinkers and we feel that they're uh, healthy and strong enough in general to join a group then they get put in the group pen where they stay together as a group for about eight weeks or until they're weaned and dehorned. Yeah. So we have actually two U40 milk systems, uh, robots there where the cows get automatically uh, fed milk um, with milk replacer. And have you always group fed calves? So in 2013, actually, we renovated this barn to be like this. And since then, we have housed them in groups like this and fed them with a machine uh, milk replacer. And straight pellets? This is actually a, a mixture of, uh, we call it the scratch pellets. Mm -hmm. So it's a very finely stra chopped straw with some pellets for the calves and they like it a lot. And they get that free choice from day one from until day one. Uh, weaning? Yes. Um, as well as uh, water, of course. Exactly. So after eight weeks, are they weighed or weaned on age? Um, they are weaned on age. Yeah. And so the, the U40 milk robot, there's a feeding curve programmed into it that automatically starts tapering off the milk access to the calf so that they, over time they wean. These little girls all have coats on. Um, is that standard? Do you do that for all calves, just small ones? Um, 
Yes, actually, so uh, because, of course, the temperature that we have uh, in the winter, it can get really cold, uh, minus 20 like it was this year. And this barn here uh, can get to zero or just above zero. Uh, our rule of thumb is any calves uh, born when the temperature is less than 10 degrees and when they're in the environment less than 10 Celsius, they get a calf coat on to keep them warm. How long does it stay on? Till it gets warm or just till the till temperature it... is above 10 degrees oh. or until the calf is a little bit bigger and stronger and can handle that lower temperature well. As we progress through the farm, we just uh, left the calf barn with a group of 20 calves and now we're in the young calf barn, they call it. And calves move into this group first, Cox? That's right. So as they leave the calf barn in the group of uh, maximum 15 calves, they transition into this young heifer barn here, um, where they learn how to use these uh, bars. And then they move along as they age into the next group. So we have six pens here of about 15 calves each. And as they get older, they get trained on the head rails. Um, and at around six to seven months old, then they transition to our next barn. And same feed as they were getting in the uh, milk barn? Correct, so we still have here a, a, a nice scratch pellet um, to stimulate their rumen. How old are they when they get off of the scratch pellet and get on to introduce the TMR? Four months, they transition from the scratch pellets to what we call our heifer ration, which yeah. consists of alpha, alpha, corn, pellets, and uh, straw. So we just left the small calf barn and we're into the bigger heifer barn where uh, the heifers will stay until they calve. Um, Cox, you want to take it from here? Yes, so calves enter this barn at around seven months of age, and this is the barn where they get bred. Uh, we breed them based on height. And you measure that how? Uh, we have a little marker there, you can see it. It's the yellow marker there. Oh, on the wall, yep. yeah. If they are that height or taller, then they are eligible to be bred. Nice. But also, uh, in addition to that, we also have a minimum age requirement. Right. So we breed at 12 months if they have the correct height. Do you do any culling um, before they calve? Do you cull heifers as they go? That is actually a good question. Um, we just started with genomic testing yeah. as of late last year. And so we are going to use that data combined with uh, some other factors here to decide which heifers continue on on our farm. So yes, uh, we actually try to call them at a younger age yeah. even in the, in the other barn before they come here. So the dry cows and the heifers are over here, fully yeah. in calf, and from there when they get close they go right back they to our the big calving pens. Two to three weeks before they are due to calf, we, we, our goal is three weeks, and they calf out here and then they go to our robot barn. So we're right back at the beginning again. Yep. So you've got Laley Center Woodstock working together with you guys on, on regular maintenance. How do you guys divvy that workload up between your employees? Yes, so all our employees are trained on the basic robot maintenance here on our farm. And that's the standard protocol that every morning we do basic maintenance and basic cleaning of the robots and make sure that everything is in good working order. At this farm here, we have a dedicated person who performs that task every day so that we know uh, it's easy to track if something uh, wears out over time or it starts uh, underperforming the robot bits. And then Lely Woodstock comes in and does sets uh, maintenance on the robots periodically. So between those two, we keep the robots in very good shape. And that's seven days a week that one person seven does that? Seven days a week. Um, on the weekends, uh, the task may alternate between another Hertz person, mm -hmm. but every day uh, uh, we perform robot maintenance. Uh, does, is everybody in charge of walking through here or do they all have a specific task that they do? We have set uh, responsibility areas for each of our employees on this farm. Um, so between all the employees though, everybody knows how to do robot maintenance because these robots is uh, where we get our income from yeah. essentially. So it's really important that all our employees know how to perform robot maintenance. But the responsibility lies uh, really with one person here on this location. Oh, I got a couple more questions for you. So what time does that person start in the morning and what time are they done and what happens when everybody goes home at night? Between our team members, we have people on the farm between 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. And we run two different time shifts in that period. So they have eight hour work days. Um, the first person comes in at six in the morning and leaves around 2.30 uh, in the afternoon. 
and other people come in at 9.30 and leave roughly around 6 p.m. So between 6 p.m. and 6 a.m., we have no employees on this farm. What happens if there happens to be an al a robot alarm? Yes, so we do have, uh, the, the robots actually uh, call us on our phone when there's something wrong. Us being you or us um, being the uh, herdsman? We, we have a divided between all our team members, including myself. So depending on who is on call that night, yep. that robot call will first go to that person and they will deal with it. We get a lot of data from the robots actually. And so the data allows us to focus on what matters most. Um, we use the data to target our work to be more preventative rather than reactive. So in the barn actually, we don't worry about the cows that do well. The combination of the robots giving us that data and the T4C software system, we really just target the cows that are suboptimal. Those are the ones that we go to first, we check them out and we help them um, improve their production and treat them if necessary. Yeah. So it, it, like I said, it, it really allows us to focus on what matters yeah. most. Treating the exceptions rather than the group. Okay. Correct, yeah. So you came from a 65 cow freestall barn to a eight robot, 460 cows here, plus two over at the other place. Where do you go from here? Have you had any thoughts on where you're going in the future? Mm -hmm. Well, on our farm, the goal is continuous improvement um, and filling our quota as efficiently as possible. So we always uh, look towards the future. We're always working on some long-term and short-term goals. Um, right now, we're, our next goal is to go to 600 cows, maybe even 1,000 in the future. Mm -hmm. But that depends on a lot of factors. But in everything that we do, we are looking to continuously improve and grow. What would be something that uh would be neat as a next step to automate? Well, we are looking at the vector system, potentially as uh, automating the feeding component of our farm. Uh, we spend a lot of hours in that mixer, a lot of hours preventing, uh, preparing feed. Mm -hmm. That is something that would be nice if we can automate it on a farm like ours. Mm -hmm.